What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman of the Time Teller. Welcome to the Friday Watch Rant. We're going to be talking about smartwatches today and you know I've been very clear about how I feel about smartwatches and how I don't really consider them to be watches at all. You know the smartest I go is probably like a G-Shock GBDH 1000. Uh, special thanks to G-Shock for sponsoring that episode where I reviewed it. Um, but you know that watch does connect to your phone but you're still getting all the things Things we love from a typical G-Shock, super duper tough, uh, incredibly functional when it comes to you know 200 meter water resistance rating, really nice backlight, all the timers and uh, chronograph functions and world time and all that good stuff. It's also solar powered, so you know that's just icing on the cake. But I've also been a big proponent rallying against the Apple Watch specifically and why I really don't like how a lot of people think that it's either the Apple Watch or a conventional wristwatch. Because again, I don't really consider an Apple Watch a watch, it's just a device on your wrist. You got a whole other wrist that you should be wearing a real watch on. But you know, that's just my opinion. Today we're gonna be doing something a little different and I'm gonna have to swallow my pride. I'm gonna, oh my God, I might throw up. I'm gonna be making an argument I'm going to be making an argument for the Apple Watch. Because <sighs> there are things that are even much worse out there. It's 3.36 p.m. Let's get down to business. So on this channel, you know I've complained about the Apple Watch, you know I've complained about various smart watches. Uh, I've done that forever, and I, call me old school. I just, I really love wrist watches. I'm sorry. But there's one thing that I complain about even more than, you know, the general smart watch, and it's Hublot. Well, I mean, check it out. <laughs> How do I? <laughs> it's like perfect storm here, guys. It is a Hublot smartwatch. That's right, guys. The Hublot Big Bang E, because you know it's it's high tech, so it has to have E. I almost sounded like EA Sports. E E E E E E. Another thing that everyone hates. You know, actually, quick tangent, people hate EA because they kind of screw their customers by giving them like really bad games and then charging them a whole bunch on the back end for uh, random stuff and they just have really poorly supported uh, just like interfaces in general. That's kind of what Hugh Blow does. It's, wow, what a crazy coincidence that I made this connection right now. Impressive. Anyway, this Hugh Blow Big Bang E is uh, very expensive for what you get around 5,800 bucks if you want the ceramic one and 5,200 bucks if you want the titanium variant. But yeah, you're getting Bluetooth 4.2 connectivity <laughs> and a battery life of one day. You're spending a ton of money for some obsolete smartwatch that is designed after a ugly piece of garbage watch from the same company. Why would you want a Hublot Big Bang? Moreover, why would you want a smartwatch that looks like a Hublot Big Bang? And if perhaps there's a company I complain about more than Hublot, Tag Heuer is doing the same thing. Isn't it crazy, guys? Now we're gonna hear about like Invicta doing this too. It's ridiculous, but Tag Heuer has the Tag Heuer Connected, excuse me, uh, series. Um, this is the 45 millimeter and it is, boy, a pretty penny as well not quite as expensive as those hue blows but around 1500 buckaroos for a wash that again is obsolete by the time it touches your wrist now this one specifically is a very very expensive fitbit it does calorie tracking distance tracking uh, does have gps but it's mostly like google assistant and google fit apps um, so why not just get that g-shock gbdh 1001 because you're getting all the functionality of a g-shock it's just under $400 and it does literally everything this Tag Heuer does, but it's, you know, about, well, over $1,000 less, around $1,100 less. Okay, so I've complained about two companies I really don't like and they're kind of usual suspects, right? Hublot and Tag Heuer, but now, you know, let's complain about a company I really do like, Mont Blanc. They're just as guilty. They have the Mont Blanc Watch Summit 2 smartwatch. This is coming in around $1,100 and uh, it is a chronograph with 
what seems to be an analog interface, but it has all the benefits of a smartwatch. You know, it does all the things a smartwatch does, except for having any form of screen that'll show you any form of notification. In fact, you actually need your phone to be on you with most of these watches that I've spoken about today, except for that G-Shock and except for the Apple Watch, but we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Because I actually found a list of horrible, horrible offenders in this whole category of way overpriced obsolete tech that you wear on your wrist. I don't even wanna call them watches. That's right, Luxatic.com actually curated the top 10 most expensive smartwatches, and I'm just gonna kinda go through them very quickly. Uh, Tag Heuer Carrera Connected, 1500 bucks, that was number 10, uh, we kinda ordered spoke about that. Then there's a company that I've never heard of before called Kairos and they make hybrid watches where it does have, I guess, a mechanical caliber in it, but it's very, very gaudy. It looks like that diesel big daddy watch or <laughs> I feel so disgusting even saying that. I don't even know what that diesel is called. Uh, got to throw a picture of it. Yeah, it looks just like that in my opinion, but these Kairos hybrid watches are 2,500 bucks and uh, yeah, okay, they're Bluetooth connected. So again, you need your phone to, to be tethered to this. Then uh, there's the Mont Blanc Time Walker E-Strap. So this is the strap. Uh, and I don't know if it has to be with a specific watch, but $4,000 and you can put an automatic watch head on that strap, uh, but it's essentially turning whatever watch you have into also a smart watch, which I think is actually a little bit more acceptable, but 4,000 bucks to have, you know, your normal watch on that strap. I don't know if that, that that math doesn't add up to me. Then Tag Heuer again is on the list at number seven, connected modular, 45. So, oh my God, 6750. And then here's a watch that I don't really want to complain about, but it's on the list here. Number six, Breitling Exospace B55. So this is another one of those smartphone connected uh, smart watches. And it's kind of like the Aerospace, but it's a little bit higher up the, Exospace. Now, I really rallied against this watch when I made an episode about how I don't like smart watches and hybrid watches. Um, but then I went to, like just pre-COVID, I went to a Breitling boutique here in SoCal and uh, I wore one of these and I was very, very, very impressed. I actually thought it was pretty cool. So yeah, when I got one on the wrist, yeah, you know, I can be honest. I was a little bit more accepting of this watch, but um, here it's on the list of the top expensive smartwatches, 8,900 bucks. And then here's one that, again, I've never heard of, Samsung De Grisgono Gear S2, which it looks like a modified uh, Samsung Gear S2 that has been bedazzled with very expensive materials, $15,000. And again, guys, I need to reiterate, this watch is more likely than not going to be obsolete in a year if it's not obsolete already. So you spent a ton of money for all those materials and then you're not gonna be able to wear the watch once updates come out, so. <sighs> Number four is an Apple Watch, but it's the gold Apple Watch edition, and this is 17 grand. What the heck? And then a British company, apparently a Hoptroff Atomic Wristwatch in platinum, $54,000. They have this very interesting looking watch that synchronizes with your iPhone. Never heard of it. Would never spend the money on it. $54,000, just buy the gold Apple Watch. And they get more expensive from here, guys, even. Uh, Built-in, Nico Gerard Sunrise Pinnacle, $112,000 for a watch that on the butterfly strap has your Apple Watch. So again, this is kind of just a piece of technology that holds your Apple Watch. I don't know if I would consider this a smart watch. It's just an 18 karat gold watch that clips in the back, like the clasp clips onto your Apple Watch. So it's like Apple Watch here, analog watch here. I don't know if that counts, but it's on this person's list. And then a uh, Brick Lux Watch Omni, 109,000 to 114,995. Again, this looks like a bedazzled Apple Watch. So I don't know if I would ever spend money on any of these watches. And here's why guys, and here's the part where I'm really going to swallow my pride. There, I admitted that I was okay about the Exospace from Breitling. If you're even thinking about spending that kind of money on a smartwatch, all right, please, please, for me, 
Consider an Apple Watch. At the time of filming, November 2020, the most advanced Apple Watch, I believe, is the Series 6. And you can find them online starting at, let's see, $259.99 brand new. That's a far cry from the $115,000. Even the ones that are a few thousand, like that Tag Heuer or that uh, Hublot Big Bang E. Here's why I think you really need to consider an Apple Watch, okay? If you're a watch enthusiast, spend $300, $400, bucks on this Apple watch and then that'll give you so much more money left over to buy a proper watch and guess what you have two wrists or you can buy one of those straps not for the money that they were talking about here but you can probably fashion a strap to hold your Apple watch and your analog watch if you only want to use one hand but guys please I've been getting numerous questions about some various very expensive smart watches and I was answering them in my inbox going back and forth trying to show people the light that it's really not not worth it because the technology has to be updated and then eventually uh you know, it just becomes obsolete and then you're left with a big chunk of money and you're not able to get out of those watches like you would with it with an analog proper mechanical watch. Even quartz watches like my Seiko Tuna, I'd be able to sell and not take that big of a hit on. If I spent $5,000 on a Hublot Big Bang E and then in two years it, it's not updating anymore, how am I gonna get rid of that? It's gonna, it's literally just gonna go in the trash. Huge bummer. So guys, this is just a little rant, but I'd love to hear your perspective because I was getting a lot of questions about smartwatches and I was not aware that they fetched these prices, that companies were making them this pricey. It is crazy. So if there's not one, again, special thanks to, what was it? Put that website here. Um, Gato. If it, special thanks to these guys for curating a list of the most expensive smartwatches. But I like if there's one that wasn't on that list, or if there one, if there's one that I didn't bring up today, please guys leave it in the comment section because I'd love to learn about it. Again, this opened my eyes. I had no idea tech, uh, or specifically wristwatch, smartwatch tech was getting that expensive. So yeah, if you had a laugh, if you were as frustrated as me, please give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, hit the bell icon so you get notified whenever we upload. Uh, join the channel, it's like YouTube's Patreon. $4.99 a month gets you uh, six pieces of content a week plus access to that members only Discord chat. And um, let's see, uh, yeah, all the affiliate links in the description below. You can shop there and support us. Shop at my personal website, www.thetimetellershop.com. A ton of ways to support us here, but the easiest way is just to keep doing what you're doing and watching the content we make because what is content without a viewer? So guys, um, yeah, I hope you had fun on this rant and I hope you kind of see where I'm coming from. It's, it's just, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it spending this money on these types of watches. But yeah, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Jory Goodman at The Time Tone. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.